Because if you've come to this video, you're most likely looking for information about working in the oil field. And while I have posted this original video, uh, I'm still getting a ton, literally hundreds and hundreds of messages on Instagram asking further questions about the oil field. So I'm gonna upload this video number two, answering the most common questions that I've gotten because it simply is not feasible for me to respond to every single one of you one by one. So if you are receiving just a reply, if I message you back and my reply is only a link, it's to this video, so welcome. This is all the questions that you guys have asked, well most of them answered in one place. I will give you a disclaimer in the beginning of the video is, um, it is not my job to find you a job. Okay, and thank you so much for the messages explaining how hard you want to work and how hard you, how badly you need the money. I sympathize. I sympathize with you, but I am not a hiring manager. I don't work <laughs> anywhere remotely close to the oil field at the moment, you know, and you, you have to do the work. You have to do the work to get hired, okay? I can't do anything for you to get you hired. I can't. I'm not going to refer people. I don't know you. <laughs> All that stuff. You have to do the work to get hired. Okay. So the number one question is, what is the best job for somebody with no experience? My answer to that is or roughneck, basically a laborer. You know, you that's the person who basically does all the shit work that nobody else wants to do. Um, you know, but again. Each of the company's job postings will outline what experience you need to uh, attain that job. Now, you have to understand that the less experience that you, the job requires, the more competitive that position is going to be because obviously there's far fewer people at the top than starting out. But again, don't be wasting your time applying for tool pusher positions for um, company man positions because those are all positions that require many 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 years of skill and experience uh, as i suggested in the first video my top suggestion for anybody just starting out is to somehow acquire a commercial driving license and drive truck on the oil field it's one of the highest paying easiest positions they're pretty much always hiring drivers and you you know you kind of write your own ticket because you have a lot more freedom you're not stuck on one rig for weeks at a time you're not you know you're able to travel uh, around you're able to go and see different places you're able to learn a lot more about the entire industry because you're visiting a lot of different rigs and performing a kind of a more different tasks uh, when I was in the oil field, drivers started at $26 an hour making uh, 72 hours a week. Uh, that's with only hauling like production water. So you have to have a tanker endorsement, but that's hauling production water. If you had a hazmat endorsement and you were hauling crude oil, you could make up to $32 an hour. Again, 70 hours a week over time after 40 hours, you do the math. Again, that is my suggestion. My suggestion is don't try to be a laborer, don't kill your body, get a CDL, drive a truck, make a ton of money doing it, and <laughs> go to your heart's content. Then, at least that's your foot in the door so that you can then explore more options and you are already making connections while you're up there. The second most asked question was, how do you live? What's the living conditions like? How do you find somewhere to live? Things of that nature. So the general consensus of the living situation is um, a reputable company will offer you company housing. What that is, is it's commonly, returned, it's commonly referred to as like a man camp or something like that. That is where a company will rent a number of double wide or single wide trailers in a kind of a small community. Those trailers are usually split up into to, uh, three or four bedrooms each, and they will divide the cost of the lodging. Either the company will pay for it in entirely, or you will pay a small amount out of your check. For instance, the company I worked for, we paid $400 a month or $100 a check for accommodation, which included everything, power, you know, heat, uh, laundry, all that stuff. So 
that's a reputable company. It's pretty, that's pretty much the easiest way to do it because obviously the company takes care of everything. If they hire you, they know you, they have somewhere for you to live. Um, the flip side of that is a lot of people tow travel trailers up there, travel trailer, RV, anything like that. What I will tell you about this, um, option is unlike smaller places in the country and smaller towns and RV parking areas, you, at least when I was in North Dakota, you will pay anywhere from five to $800 a month to park your RV in a spot that has uh, power available. Also, it gets incredibly cold and incredibly windy, so if your RV isn't in the best repair or uh, you don't have a winter model or a uh, summit model that has the, the additional insulation in the flooring and the additional insulation in the walls, it's probably not the best idea to live in a camper up there. Um, as well as that, you know, if you have a 30 amp camper, you're not going to be able to run heat. And if you run your propane heat all the time, uh, you're going to be constantly <laughs> running out of propane and or going to, uh, to different stores trying to find propane. Again, your mileage may vary, but this is what it was like when I was up there. Let me mute that. It's not a bad idea. Um, you know, maybe in West Texas or other, other, you know, Oklahoma, places like that. I know you can park an RV a little bit cheaper, but I'm just telling you what I went through. The third kind of option is obviously you purchase your own housing or you rent your own accommodation. This is probably the worst, well, it's definitely the worst option out of all of them because this is essentially people like putting up sheds in their backyard and renting them out. You know, you've heard horror stories and they are true. People putting up sheds, people sharing a studio apartment uh, with four bunk beds in it and still paying $2,000 a month. You know, these are the people who are, are truly taking advantage of the industry and the oil field and, uh, and not really caring about anything but themselves making a profit off of oil workers in that space. Again, nothing wrong with making a profit, but it's a pretty um, primitive living situation and I wouldn't recommend it to anybody, you know, thinking about going up to the oil field. Number three is family life. It is incredibly hard on family life. So if you have a bunch of newborn kids or an, incredi or an incredible needy girlfriend or wife, it's probably not the job for you. You know, it, there's no internet access unless it's included in your house, which most are not. You know, so you have your cell phone. Uh, I would choose Verizon because it has the best service. But again, you're going to be gone for a couple of weeks at a time and your priority to be there is to work and to make money and to give these oil companies who are paying you sometimes up to $14,000 a month for relatively inexperienced labor, you're there to give them what they're paying for, not be taking breaks all the time, not be calling, not be having family drama. So any job, is it's no different than being in the military and deploying. You need to make sure that your house at home is taken care of before you try to push yourself into an oil job. I get it. It's good money. It's, it's enticing. Um, don't bring your fucking family with you. Okay. Just, there's nothing to do. There's nothing to do. It's not a kid friendly environment. It's not a family friendly environment. Don't drag your wife and kids or girlfriend and kids or whoever to the oil field with you. It's not a good idea. Okay. Not only that, but the per capita of men to women in the oil field is probably 200 to 1. So you, you, not only that, but while you're at work, you're going to have your wife or girlfriend doing nothing but getting hit on all day long by every oil worker there. And whether she's a good girl or not is irrelevant. It's going to happen. She may not do anything, of course, but that's, like I said, when when the the ratio is that that dramatically skewed male to female, everyone's going to be trying to take a shot. The cost of living. Another huge one I get is the cost of living. Um, while you guys are all making additional monies working in the oil field, you have to remember that all the local business owners inflate their prices to match. For instance, uh, where I lived at outside of Newtown, the cost of everything was inflated. You know, a slice of pizza would cost you $5. Things like Coca-Cola and, you know, water, stuff like that is generally the same price, but anything cooked 
in a in a family style restaurant the prices are going to be inflated you know mcdonald's uh walmart things of that nature they're kind of more set prices nationwide but you have to remember also you may have to travel where i was in newtown the only walmarts were only either in minot or williston uh, well the closest to at least then you have to think that statewide all the people are driving to those big city hubs to purchase those goods so it may be very busy in that walmart it may be very um, limited in supply because there are so many people trying to buy everything up so just just keep in mind you know i wouldn't go up there with zero dollars if you can afford to take a thousand bucks with you or something like that you know always keep enough money to get home as well that's that's a big thing. You never know in the oil field when uh, the good times are going to end. And like I said, if you if you spend every dollar you make, you know, just make sure that you can get home. When I was looking at working overseas, they recommended that you actually kept a balance of ten thousand dollars available to get home. But obviously, being in America, worst case comes to worst, you can get a Greyhound or a flight. You know, keep a thousand bucks in the bank, you know, so you can always get yourself home if anything happens and you need to leave. Or like I said, if there's another economic downturn and the oil field is no longer paying or they do mass layoffs, you know, you have those options. I'll circle back around finally to the types of jobs because this is obviously like the main question is what job should I apply for? Again, as I said in the beginning of the video, I don't know you, I don't know your personal skills, but there are all kinds of jobs, whether it's support, safety, you know, so <clears throat> trucking companies have dispatchers, they have mechanics, they have drivers, they have safety personnel. Oil companies, again, have dispatchers, administrative persons, you know, um, field operations, safety personnel, all of the man camps. The man camps have janitorial staff, cooks. You know, front desk people, they have security guards at the man camps as well. So no matter what your skill set is, there is some kind of place for you to fit in. You just have to research kind of what what it is you're good at and what it is you're most likely going to be hired as. You know, all the stores in Williston, you know, they, they have storekeepers, they have you know, assistance, warehousing jobs, things of that nature. Um, you know, the oil supply companies need drivers. They need customer service representatives. They need guys in the warehouse, forklift drivers, everything like that. You know, and then obviously everything else that goes along with it, whether you can drive a tow truck, whether you can be a garbage man, whether you can be a cook at a restaurant, a server at a restaurant, all of these things are jobs. Every job is needed to support the uh, industry that's there and the level of people that were there uh, for example you know the walmart where in williston at one point was paying 21 dollars an hour for shelf stockers because they need to get that product on the sh so do what you can do the research if you don't get hired right away just keep applying keep doing what you need to do um the oil field is coming back you know in 20,000 in 2018 i think the oil field will be back in full swing so just keep at it. You know, it's not for everybody. Be wise uh, before you make the commitment because you could end up spending more money than you're going to make just moving back and forth. Guys, that's all the information I have for you. If you need anything else that I haven't covered yet, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at jflatout. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for watching. If you did get some use out of this channel, please, or this video, please do leave a like and a comment. Maybe hit the subscribe button. I do some cool stuff with uh, diesel trucks as well, so you might enjoy that. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Brian Little. <laughs> Yoga!